Da da. How are you feeling? Uh, hey, somebody didn't sleep well last night. How do you know? Because you kept waking me up. <laughs> I had these really vivid dreams. Quite disturbing. Yeah, I know what you mean. For months after Linda died, I had some weird dreams. Mm, I can imagine. The worst one was when when I dreamt she hadn't died in the accident. She survived it. And I woke up really, really happy. Till I realised that that's all it was. Just a dream. Oh, well, what I'm going through can't be anything like what you've suffered. Yeah, well... You deserve to find some happiness, you know that? Well, maybe I'm finding it. Thank you for being there for me. Oh, it was worth it just to see the look on the tight's face. Mm -hmm. So, do you reckon we're the talk of the village by now? Does that worry you? No. It's just that there are some people I'd like to speak to before the gossip machine takes to the road. Who? Well, Ned and Roy, for starters. Then tell them. Cleaning. We can't complain. No, I really hate cleaning. We both wanted to work here badly. Yeah, because I thought it'd be a laugh. <laughs> this is a great laugh. At least it's a job. Yeah, some job. I can't stand the cleaning up somebody else's mess. Wouldn't mind if we'd been allowed to go to the disco. Then I wouldn't care if we had to clean up. Exactly. But we weren't, so it's not fair. I really, really hate cleaning. Tori, you've got a meeting in 20 minutes on farm with Chris. Oh, I'll have to completely re-educate you, won't I? What do you mean? We're still suffering from that working class ethic. You have to work and be useful or you feel guilty. Mm hmm So I'll try telling that to Zach Dingle. Mm. Your staff have a great sense of timing. Come in. Lord Michael, to see you, ma'am. Can't keep away, can I? Oh, I could do without this. Do you want me to get rid of him? No. I suppose I'd better see him. I'll come down. I'm sorry. I do need to deal with this. I'm surprised to see you here, Michael. I've come to apologise for my behaviour yesterday. Could I speak with you alone? No, you can't. Please. I'll get rid of him very quickly. I don't know how Tara had the audacity to take Biff along to her own father's funeral. No, no, it's only been his grave 24 hours. Already he'll be turning in it. <laughs> Do you think Biff has an ulterior motive? I won't put it past him. Come on. Yeah, but... I mean, Tara's no fool, so what's she playing at? She must see something in it. They've got absolutely nothing in common. <laughs> well, maybe it's a physical thing. I wonder. Mind boggles. Well, it's hardly intellectual stimulation, is it? <laughs> hardly. <laughs> Look, uh... I've got to be off in a minute. I've got an early morning meeting. Can you drop James off at the playgroup? Well, I can, but I don't think he's very well. Oh? Well, he's off his food. He's got a bad cough and his nose is running. Hey. Oh, it'll probably just be a cold. I don't think it's anything more. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, man, eh? Do you know what you're doing? Michael, I don't have to answer to you. But I'm worried about you. There's no need. We've been friends for a long time. You know how fond I am of you. Yes, I know. I care about you very much. But that doesn't give you the right to meddle in my private life. I just don't want to see you hurt or become a laughing stock. Well, let me worry about that. 
Finish it now before it gets out of hand. Michael, please. Let's not spoil our friendship. It's even more important to me since Father died. I just wish I could make you see sense. Perhaps you should go. You can rely on me, you know. I'll be here no matter what happens. Betty? I wouldn't have thought you'd have had much to smile about. <laughs> you know, I've always secretly hoped that one day I could match your prowess as a gossip. Me? A gossip? Where have you heard that one? And I think, Betty, that day has arrived. Oh, aye. Would you like to hear some juicy, hot-off-the-press scandal? Not really, but if you insist on telling me. <laughs> a Biff and Lady Tara are having a fling. Oh, so it's common knowledge now, is it? Pardon? Well, Biff told me about him and Lady Tara weeks ago. He knew his little secret would be safe with me. <laughs> Can I have a word? I know what you think about me and Tara, and I'm not having another go at you, but can you please just leave us alone? Tara is a very dear friend. I know that. And I won't get in the way of that friendship. I don't want to see her hurt. She won't get hurt from my side. No? You say you're not in this for revenge? I'm not. Nor money? Look, don't start this again. So what are you in it for? That's not your business. Do you love her? Do you love her? Do you? You're just using her, aren't no. you? No. So you love her, then? Do you? Do you? Yes! I do. I love her. So now you know, just stay away. Kathy. I didn't know you got it in your Eric's feather's gonna be well ruffled by this. Marlon, do you think I've gone too far? Don't bottle it now, Kathy. You were seeing it in print like that. It, it's obviously gonna upset Eric. I thought that was the idea. Even so. Not it... any rot. It's the truth, right? The wine bar has lost its license. You know what to do with you. What's all the excitement? <laughs> yeah, well, it just serves him right. Of course. It's now compared with my news. Not pregnant, Betty. I'm talking about Biff and Lady Tara. What about them? Well, they're having a... How shall I put it? They are having a liaison. You joke! Biff and Lady Tara! Biff poured his heart out to me some weeks back. But now it's in the open. I can reveal all. Biff! And Lady Tara. I can't believe it. Oh, that's who he was with in our house the other night. <laughs> Don't be disgusting. You're quiet. Uh, I already knew about it, Betty. I saw them together at the summer fair. Now, watch and learn. This is great, Dad. Uh, morning, madam. We're from Magic Cleaners, offering a special dry cleaning service, charging only three pounds a garment. Three pounds? Yeah, introductory offer. Have you uh, got anything what needs dry cleaning? Yeah, I think I probably have. Just wait there a sec. Notice the charmer. Eh? The cool authority. I'm dead impressed, Dad. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to get the stains off this jacket. Oh, no problem. That's why we're called magic cleaners. We make everything vanish. Dirt, grime, stains from any garment. How long is it going to take? W uh, how long are you here for? Well, I'm just here on a midweek break. Oh, I'll have it back and forth then. No problem. Thanks. 
And I promise you'll never see these stains ever again. <laughs> we'll make everything vanish. Nice one, Dad. <laughs> well, I think we took that bird to the cleaners. <laughs> Got another meeting this afternoon, so you never know. Yeah, never know. Steve! Well, maybe he wants to give you a few tips on the art of lovemaking. I learnt everything I know from an expert. Cheeky. Have you seen Roy? Yeah, he's on his way back from the holiday village, why? You haven't spoken to him about me and Tara, have you? No. Cheers. Biff! Oh, better go, your mistress beckons. Yeah. A favour. Uh, the lawyer from the family firm is coming over just to handle the will reading. Can you pick him up? OK. Where from? At the station. Mr Humphrey Granger. Fat little bald chap. The specs. I feel really awkward asking you. But... I'm still your driver. No, Look, but... don't worry. Eh? Mm. Well, that's what I call managing a stud. Mm-hmm. Roy, I think there's something you should know. All right. You seen this? I don't think you're going to like it. The tea rooms are in no way associated with them. Pallard's wine bar have recently had their license revoked because of underage drinking. It's bad news, isn't it? This is libelous. Well, not quite. After all, it's true. I can't believe Cathy would stoop this low. A cheap trick, Eric. Cheap it! Just the sort of thing you'd have done. I'm gonna have it out with her. Ah, what, what, what are you gonna do? I don't know. I can't believe she'd do this. It's so out of character. You have this one with me, Cathy. Oh, thank you very much, Alan. Your advert would have done my business no end good. Yeah, it's bollard ready, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to see his face when he does. <laughs> Cheers, Gavin. Cheers. Beard. Heard what? Oh, I wanted to be first to tell you. Uh, drink up and come on. I think it's a hang. What is it? Biff and Lady Tara. They're having an affair. <laughs> you were. I've just heard myself. You're not serious. <laughs> it's been going on for weeks. Biff and Lady Tara. You're winding us up. Tell us you're winding us up. Right. Don't walk stupid, will you? You what? I'll flame and kill him. Johnson from Granger and Hopethorpe. I was very sorry to hear about your father. Um, I was expecting Mr. Granger himself. Oh, he's asked me to handle this on his behalf. Oh, it's not a problem, is it? Ah, oh, I suppose if Humphrey thinks you're capable. <laughs> Lady Oakwell, I specialise in probate. I can assure you you're in completely safe hands. Right. Um, you'd better come in then. What are you playing at, eh? Hey? I don't believe it. You and that murderous tart. What are you talking about? How can you do something like this, Dad, eh? Will you just calm down? Calm down, I'll flame and kill you. Get, get off me! OK, that's enough of that. Ooh, the... Ned, will you just calm down so we can talk about this? Right. Now that's settled, shall we get on? I should have gone after him, you know, Jack. You don't really think he'd do anything stupid, do you? What it's like when they lose, is it? I can understand, Ned, though. It came as a bit of a shock when I found out. You mean you knew? 
Yeah. So why didn't you say up, then? Roy, I didn't think it was any of my business. Oh, he's only my best mate, and everyone else finds I'm village before I do. Well, maybe he was too embarrassed to say anything. How could you do this? How could you do this to me? I'm very sorry, Eric. <laughs> to actually go to the trouble of paying for an advert. You drove me to it. I drove you to it? How can you stoop so low? Eric, leave her alone. Have you seen this? You can hardly blame her. You brought it on yourself. What? You behave very badly. I behave badly. I am so disappointed in you, Cathy. I really am so disappointed. I can't believe you do this to Alinda's memory. Ned, will you please listen? In fact, hang on. I can. She hasn't been dead too much when in bed with Kelly Windsor. Are you going to listen to me or what? That woman's husband murdered your wife. I know that. Then how can you have anything to do with I her? I can't mourn Linda for the rest of my life. Oh, Biff, no one expects you to. At least you can respect her memory. Don't you dare tell me about respecting Linda's memory. For months after she died, I carried her memory around in here. Every single day and night, she never left me and she never will. But I've got to move on. Do you think I didn't expect any of this to happen? Why do it then, eh? Come on, why do it? I, I don't know. It just happened. Happened rubbish! I couldn't help it. I knew in my head it was wrong, but I just couldn't help it. So what are you saying, eh? Come on, what are you saying? You saying you're in love with her? Oh, you are, aren't you, eh? You know you make me sick the pit of my stomach. I want no more to do with you. You don't understand. She's OK. She is nothing like her husband. You stay away. Ned, will you please just listen to me? I've heard all I want to hear, I'm telling you. You stay away from me. I thought you'd be still down the holiday village. Oh, I've just finished. What can I get you? Nothing. Well, not from the shop. I was wondering if I could borrow that CD, you know, Greatest Hits of 98 one. Sure, I'll just go and find it. Won't be sick. Cheers. Was it the dance one? What are you doing? Kirsty, what do you think you're doing? Donna, I'm really sorry. I am sorry. Oh, I feel terrible. It's just that since the house burnt down, my mum hasn't been able to afford these sort of things. I'm sorry. This is going to be quite a job. I'll be tied up here for the rest of the day. Pick me up at seven. Fine. What was going on out there with your chauffeur and that man? Well, I don't think that's any of your business. Sorry, I asked. You're here to look after my financial affairs, not my private ones. Fine. But thank you. By the way, that was very brave of oh. you. I knew you wouldn't hit a woman. Hmm. I talked to Humphrey. Good. He spoke very highly of you. Oh, I'd be very surprised if he didn't. Well, sorry, am I interrupting? Uh, Chris, this is Laura Johnston from my lawyers. Laura, Chris Tate, my managing director. Pleased to meet you. And you. Laura's here for the reading of the will and to sort through my father's papers. She'll be staying here at home farm until her work's completed. So we'll be seeing quite a lot of you. I expect so. Good. Maybe we could go for a drink sometime. Oh, that would be very nice. Thank you. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Come on. Come on. Hello. I'm sorry, but Dr. Burton is currently out on a call. Yeah, ambulance, please. Oh, yeah. oh hi. Is Kirsty in? Oh, no, she's gone out. Oh, right. Do you want to leave a message? What's up? Here. What's this? Some food. The sell by date's tomorrow. Mum said you could have them. Sorry? They're, you know, for free. <laughs> Well, thanks all the same, but you can tell your mum. You don't need charity. But I thought 
since the fire? Yeah, we're managing just fine. Thanks. But you see, I caught Kirsty taking food from the shop. What? She was dead upset. She said it was for the family. Oh, no, you've got it wrong. She is collecting food, but it's for a friend at school. What friend's this? A girl in your class. Well, I don't know her. Are you sure? Yeah, I know all Kirsty's mates. She doesn't know anyone in my class. managed to get it together with it. That's not the point, is it? Oh, fair dues, man. She's stunning looking. You can hardly blame him if she offered it to him on a plate. I can't believe I'm listening to this. Look, I know you're upset, but you've got to let the past go. Do you think I don't know that? I never really got over Lindy, you know. You're flaming as now. Look, he's my best mate, and I think he's got a right to have a life after Linda. I just hope he knows what he's doing. Used to getting through our first day in public. Wasn't so bad, was it? Wasn't so good either. I can understand how Ned's feeling. Oh, come round. Oh, come on, this is a vintage 1984 burgundy. An excellent year. Go on, try it. Okay. Oh. Well, it's um, <clears throat> it's not bad. I prefer a pint of lager, but I could get used to it. A given time. Yeah. Well, I shall give you as much time as you want. Oh yeah. What you said to Michael? Did you mean it? You heard. I did. Or were you just trying to wind him up? Well... <clears throat> because if you did mean it... I think you should know. I feel exactly the same way. What's the matter with him? They haven't said, they just did some tests on him. I tried to call you. Look at him. Oh, my poor baby. Look, we should have some news very soon. I got him here as quick as I could. Look at him. Just look at him. He'll be all right. He will. Oh, God, what's the matter with him? 